Today's scripture comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 24. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no vegetation of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being, and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. In the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havelia, where there is gold, and that the gold of that land is good. Delium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gion. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Israel, and the fourth river is the Ephrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it of it you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of God this one was taken." Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Broadway. I am Emma Blakey, and I am a senior at Rockbridge High School. And I'm Addie Cruz, and I'm a senior at Hickman High School. Emma and I have both grown up at Broadway, and we are excited to bring the message for Youth Sunday as we go back to the basics of who we are and what we were created for. The world around us is filled with labels and stereotypes. The society we live in has created these categories that we must all fit into, sorting us out, sorting us all out. This categorization system has caused the human race to be slowly broken down. We're capable of so much more than the labels given to us. These labels cause people to hide away and their potential fades. But we must always remember that God created everyone to be equal. When we reflect on our original identity and purpose, we go beyond the labels and get back to the basics of who God created us to be. When I was a little girl, my mom would take me to the Rockbridge High School show choir events. And when I saw the performers in City Lights and Satin and Lace for the first time, I told myself I was going to get over my stage fright because I wanted to be one of them. Well, flash forward to 2020, and I was a freshman in high school auditioning for a place on the Rockbridge Satin and Lace show choir team. I've been in show choir all four years of my high school career. That was my dream after all. Notice how I said it was. What had begun as a dream would soon turn out to be one of the greatest challenges of my life. During my junior year, I was given the opportunity to be the understudy in our show that explored the story of Cleopatra. Well, I had to step in and be the lead when our original lead got sick. I knew that it wasn't going to be easy, so I put on a brave face and hoped for the best. Over the course of the year, we faced lots of difficulties as a team. There were tensions and judgment, with what felt like much of it directed at me. 
To make matters worse, my personal life was spiraling out of control and the lack of empathy and understanding from certain team members put me in a very isolated state. I had never felt so alone before, and I began to question why I had gotten involved in show choir in the first place. Like Emma, I've always loved the performing arts too. And like Emma, I know how it feels having a dream go south. I joined my high school theater program in my sophomore year with the encouragement of my friends. It was an exciting time for me because I had finally found a way to creatively express myself. As I became more involved, I discovered that I enjoyed taking on the organizational leadership roles. This year, after many shows of hard work, I went from having a leading position in one show to being an assistant in another when someone else was awarded the role instead of me. This led to a lot of frustration and jealousy on my behalf. It was a blow to my ego, and I struggled with bitter feelings toward myself and my abilities and even towards my friends. Amid my frustration, I had to go back to the basics of why I wanted to do theater in the first place. This often happens when life comes apart. Hardship makes us return to the basics of who we are and what is truly important. I realized that theater was no longer bringing me the same joy. Instead, it had become a draining and time-consuming pressure. When it was time to sign up for the next production, I paused and asked myself what was driving me. I dug deep into why I started participating in theater in the first place. It was no longer my dream, and I had begun to feel more like a box I had put myself in. I had outgrown the place that taught me to express myself creatively, and that's okay. The theater program served its purpose in my life, and I had been given a sign that it was time to move on. While it was a difficult decision, it was the right one. Stepping back allowed me to recognize my conf- how, how my confidence has grown and has allowed me to flourish socially and focus on other activities that bring me a fulfillment. This was certainly my experience with show choir. I had to take the time to go back to those basics and reflect on who I was and why I joined show choir in the first place. I realized that it wasn't for the shiny plastic that we call trophies, and it wasn't to doubt myself due to the labels I would receive. It was because I loved music and performing. I had to take the time to ground myself and seek the help I needed to keep going. Had I not gone back to the basics of why I love show choir in the first place, I would have never been able to enjoy my senior year. Now, as I end my senior year, I put show choir in a place that I feel comfortable leaving. I can look back on all the good memories and dancing around the stage as if no one was looking. My original dream may have taken some turns, but despite the rocky path, I didn't give up on my dream. God never wants us to give up on our dreams. Our scripture today is a wonderful reminder of God's original dream for humankind. Before the fall, humans lived in proper relationship with God. They lived in proper relationships with the earth and with each other. There were no labels, false judgment, competition, or blame. We are formed from the earth. God's own breath fills our lungs as we are given the responsibility to care for creation and one another. Notice, too, that God created us for a relationship. The man was not created first because he was better than anyone else, but rather to be in relationship with creation and with others. The woman was created to be man's companion and helpmate. The creation from the rib, mankind's side, symbolizes their equality. She was not made from a kneecap or a shoulder because she wasn't higher or lower than Adam, but she was an equal. They're said to be one flesh and share life together without shame. Sitting and reflecting on God's creation of humankind before the fall allows us to gain the empathy and acceptance that we need more of in this world. God's original hope was for humankind to coexist as equals, helpmates, and caretakers of creation. God hoped that all persons could enjoy the status of interconnection without the division of race, religion, body image, sexuality, or even generational difference getting in the way. We spend so much of our lives picturing how good we could look or how one day we might have the perfect life or the money we could someday make and what we might spend it on. God created humankind to spread love amongst each other and to take care of the planet. When we look into the future, we miss what's currently happening. We miss the beauty around us. Everyone is a child of God. Everyone gets to write their own story. And with that comes acceptance and understanding. However, despite God's original hope for humankind, we know that sometimes we fall short. As a result, all the blame, labels, and conflict that we spoke of earlier enter our lives and our society. We get caught up in prejudice, hate, and inequality. Competition and conflict, be it in the performing arts, politics, or even church, divide us against each other. 
One area of, ch of challenge relevant to many teens is conflict between generations. All of us have probably experienced distrust between generation generations, be it the younger generation not trusting their elders, or parents and grandparents feeling disrespected by the younger generation because they do things differently than how they once did. When we take time to listen to one another and form relationships with each other, we gain the ability to hear and respect other perspectives. Another area where conflict and competition arises, especially among our generation, is body image. Issues related to body image are on the rise, especially among young women. When God created Adam and Eve, the two are said to be naked, but without shame or embarrassment. Genesis 2.25 states that they only gain self-consciousness after eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is then that they recognize their nakedness and they become insecure and self-conscious. From this comes the first standards of beauty, based not on self-worth, but on embarrassment and shame. Too many young females are spending countless hours trying to change the way they look to fit into the standards our society has created. Genesis reminds us of the original beauty and value that we were created for. Without the shame, embarrassment, or self-consciousness, humans can embrace our true selves with love and authenticity. We can extend body positivity to include other qualities, such as race, gender, and sexuality. Genesis reminds us that we all share a common origin. God's breath fills all bodies equally. We are created for equality, companionship, and relationship. Race, gender, and sexuality are all basic qualities of our sacred embodiment. So are the rights and respect that come with them. Genesis teaches that judgment, prejudice, and discrimination based on these qualities was never a part of God's original plan for humankind. We are one flesh and should treat each other as such, both in our relationships and in society. As mentioned before, we humans love having answers to things. We try so hard to see the world in black and white, but there's rainbows and gray spots everywhere. We can't always have an answer to things. It's easy to jump to conclusions about someone and make quick judgments when you're the one making them. But when the tables are turned, it hurts. Judgment burns bridges and shatters relationships. It is important to see the world as God would and seek the good in people. This is where Jesus comes in. In his first letter to Corinthians, Paul refers to Jesus as the new Adam. Paul says, thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The first man was formed from the earth made of dust. The second man is formed from heaven. As one of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as one of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the one of the dust, we will also bear the image of the one of heaven. In Jesus, the new Adam, we see God's basic dream for humanity come alive. We see our truest, most authentic selves bearing the image of God beyond the labels, judgments, and division. It's why Paul says in Galatians, there's no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Or, as a wise Broadway pastor once said, if you can cultivate the quiet in your life, you can find this union. The greatest barrier to union is not people talking others out of the existence of God, but it is the noise of the world that suffocates the union. Mark Riley. So how do we get back to the basics amidst the challenges of our lives and world? When we feel the impulse to judge or label, when we feel jealousy or disappointment, we must first stop and reflect on the emotions we feel and the judgments we make. We have to remind ourselves of who God created us to be. When society pushes competition or our lives come unraveled, we must remember who we are at our most basic core self. In a world that's obsessed with the shiny plastic and being first, we remember how we were created to be equals and caretakers of each other. Jesus, the new Adam, shatters the stereotypes and labels we create. He repairs our relationships, restores justice, and reveals our truest self, allowing us to live fully as children of God. We long for a world of respect and equality, Broadway, and we hope you will join us and the other youth of our church in striving for a world where all can shine, and the basic rights, dignity, and hope for everyone can flourish. After all, this is what we were created for. Let all, all God's, God's people, people say, say Amen. amen.